Hello, welcome back. In the last video, I covered the basics of why we're even doing this video series and how to set up the hardware. In this video, we're just gonna talk about basic software setup. One of the things that's interesting about the Huzzah is that it's not running the standard firmware that's on the 8266s that ship from the factory. You typically interact with those chips via AT commands, and those are a little bit of a pain in the butt. So Adafruit has taken uh, the liberty of swapping out that basic firmware for Node MCU. Specifically, we're going to be interacting with this Huzzah module here via a language called Lua. We are going to be using now two programming languages to work with each of these devices individually, but this is going to be darn straightforward. If you look on the left of my screen, you will see the code that I've already taken the liberty of uploading to my Teensy. All this code does is effectively, if you type into the serial monitor, it will send that information to the 8266. If the ESP8266 is sending information back, it will print it to the serial monitor. That's effectively all this code does. I have swapped out, or rather I have pound sign defined, pre-compile search and replaced, all of the instances of serial with USB comms and all of the instances of serial one to Wi-Fi comms because I wanted those to be a little bit more meaningful in their nomenclature. USB comms is, as you can see in the code base here, the communication lines between the Teensy and USB. So anything written to this will be printed out on the serial monitor. And this Wi-Fi comms system is connecting up the Teensy and the ESP8266. So that is uh, allowing for communication between those two. Within setup, you're beginning both of those at these particular baud rates. The Teensy is always going to instantiate at 115,200 regardless of if you even put this number in, but it's good to have. The default baud rate for the 8266 is 9600. I've then added a line which just waits for effectively the serial monitor to open and then prints out a little greater than sign. Within the loop, there are really only two sections here. There is a section that covers any messages that are sent to the ESP8266, and there is a section that covers messages coming from the ESP8266. That's all this sketch does. The sketch is effectively a modification from another uh, debugging sketch. It's called ESP Debug from a library called Wi-Fi ESP. It's a fantastic library, but it assumes that the ESP8266 is still running that AT command type firmware, which because ours is not, we can't actually use that library. So we're just using a modification of that code base to interact with our ESP8266. All right, so let's start actually interacting with this thing. The first thing that I typically do with a new platform is hello world. Surprise, there are two ways to do that on most microcontroller systems via the serial monitor and via some piece of hardware. With this one, there is no difference. It is absolutely the same. There's a built-in LED on pin three, which we'll be using, and we can also just print directly to the serial monitor. So all I've got to do is up in here, print hello world, and it should echo back. Hello world, excellent. If you don't get hello world, there's probably something wrong with your wiring. So you should go back to the first video, check out how it's wired, or look down at the bottom of my screen here because you still have a reference there and recheck those connections. At this point, now we know that the serial communication works. Let's actually test the hardware out by doing a hardware hello world by blinking an LED. Just like in the Arduino IDE and any other microcontroller, I need to tell it which pins I want to use for what purpose. Within Lua, that's with the command gpio.mode. This effectively functions the same as pin mode within the Arduino IDE. And now that I've told the microcontroller that I want to use pin three as an output, I can toggle it on and off. And you should see that the LED is turned on. 
Now, for whatever reason, they've wired their hardware in such a way that a GPIO.low is actually turning on the LED. This line of code that I've just written right here is the equivalent to a digital write function within the Arduino IDE. Remember that this is an interpreter, so it's taking one command at a time. I probably want this thing, if I want it to function autonomously, to just blink on its own. So for that, I'm going to need a loop. So I'm going to turn off this LED, and then I'm actually going to plug in the loop code. Cool, here we go with a loop code. I've already set up the fact that pin three is an output. So while one do space space, because you got to tab in, I'm going to turn on the LED. And then with the timer TMR, going to delay, basically waste a bunch of CPU cycles. And this is in microseconds for the record. So 1 million microseconds I'm going to delay for. And then I'm going to turn the LED off. Forgot my spaces. This may or may not work. And then I'm going to delay again for a million microseconds and then I'll end the loop. Look at that! Congratulations everyone. That is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully see you again soon. Goodbye!